Uh, very good evening uh, to everybody that is watching. Thank you for joining us on uh, the agenda for this week. My name is uh, Rivo Njebela. Tonight on the platform, we are joined by John Walenga. He's uh, a, uh, an entrepreneur. He's a traditional leader. And uh, he is just here on the platform to walk us through his journey and to share his views on other things related uh, to the spaces in which he operates. John, thank you very much uh, for making time. I've been looking for you for a long time, but for some reason I've prayed hard this year. Mm -hmm. My ancestors are working hard, mm -hmm. so I managed to, to trace you. Thank you for making time. Ancestors will <laughs> never fail you. <laughs> they will never fail you. Other people and other things, I see you people <laughs> worshipping. Yeah. Ah, they will never come to the party. <laughs> thank you. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, yeah. I know it has been a long coming. Yes. But uh, yeah, there is uh, time for everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let, let's talk uh, about your journey, John, because I know, which sort of serves as, a, as an inspiration to me sometimes, that you have worked in the media as a, as a journalist. Or as a, I've seen your bylines maybe in the late 80s or, or early 90s, the, the Namibian. Mm -hmm. And then um, you went on to become really successful on your own. Mm -hmm. um, where did your journey start, especially the business one? Well, um, I can assure you I did not start off uh, selling sweets. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that because, much because that is what you guys tell us. Every that, successful guy, no, that, we started <laughs> selling apples on the streets and then suddenly I'm here. No, I'm not one of those. Yeah, okay. um, um, where do I start? Look, all of us ne, as uh, indigenous people, uh, the talent of uh, doing business, you get it from this very same day you open your eyes. Who, especially in our generation, yeah. cannot uh, be grateful to your parents for having sold that kapana, yeah. Yeah. that oshikundu, that otombo. Mm. That entrepreneurial spirit that mm. is instilled in you, Shotoya Mitha. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother was no different. She was very much, and I don't call her anything else. She was a business person. Yeah, yeah. The fact that she did not make it to become uh, the author and list of this world mm -hmm. doesn't uh, take away anything uh, from her as mm -hmm. a business person. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I truly believe that uh, we are all all of us are products of our uh, 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 generation, mm. uh, your product of your environment where you grow up. Uh, you are a product of, uh, of your peers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, leadership uh, to me, eventually, is generational. Yeah, yeah. So you are what you are because of the environment under which you are molded. Mm, mm. Um, so that's how far I can trace yeah, yeah. Uh, my entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. yeah. Well, what did you start with? Because um, right now, at the peak of your, you have peaked now, and I'm sure you will continue to grow your, your, what you do, but uh, you started with what? Interesting enough, uh, my first uh, project as an entrepreneur yeah. was uh, at uh, higher school. Okay. I used to own a very beautiful camera. Yeah. I used to take pictures. Okay. And uh, to date, I'm addicted to cameras and uh, uh, art, mm. basically. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I used to sell those uh, pictures. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it so happened that I'm one of those few people who don't have pictures. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Because of your own? Yes. Because, because nobody, always... I'm, I'm behind the camera yeah. all the time. Yeah. So the few pictures I have, I really cherish them. Because I look at them, I'm like, wow. Yeah. This guy is a better camera person than me. <laughs> so um, that's where I would trace it, where I started. Yeah. But of course, uh, that was at the height of uh, uh, political uh, uh, independence. Yeah. Uh, it so happened that uh, I was involved in one way or another okay. in the struggle. 
um, yeah, and uh, all that combined with traditional leadership in which I was brought up mm -hmm. um, uh, as a young boy, for that matter. I used to, I remember very well when I was in, uh, or from standard three to maybe standard seven. Mm -hmm. I used to be my father's secretary because he was a headman. Uh -huh. And uh, the one thing I, I've always been looking for is the notes. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know what I was doing. Mm. But uh, apparently I was doing a great job okay. at that age. Wonderful. So some of these things, uh, we grew up in them. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in, uh, in a place called uh, Oshitapo. Okay. Oshitapo is your version of uh, Oluna. Oh, I see. Yeah, um, okay. um, around Ondangwa, if not in Ondangwa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, city boy or the uh, town boy or what? It well, you today you could say that maybe, yeah. but uh, before it was more of uh, an operational area for the South African uh, military uh, forces. Yeah, yeah. Kufut was just next door. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 101 Battalion was just next door. Um, um, the other one in Ondangwa, um, was it Sector 10? It used to be called Sector 10. Okay. Uh, it's not uh, too far away from my place. The guys who were creative enough to go into exile, they were also frequenting our house. Yeah, yeah. Because it was the only, no, no. Uh, second traditional uh, house yeah. in uh, Oluno that time. So it was very easy for them to come and uh, uh, be hidden here and there because it's a traditional house. But the opposite is also true, John, that, yeah. um, that um, traditional leaders mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. were also targeted for sort of to be captured by the the system of, of South Africa, where they were offered some incentives and get co-opted co in that system, mm -hmm. and they, they sort of start serving at the behest of, uh, of the colonial government, <coughs> or the apartheid government. Uh, how did your family sort of navigate in that space? And, and yourself also having uh, these battalions around you, mm -hmm. when it was more easier actually for you to simply cross over mm -hmm. to them instead of going in exile again in the bush and the rain and the snakes there. Mm. That is uh, correct, uh, uh, Toivo. However, you should remember one thing, that it did not only start with uh, colonialism. Yeah. It started with uh, uh, the religious movement. Yeah. Even them, for you and I to end up John and Toivo, is because of that movement of, uh, you call it what, um, 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 the religious movement, um, what do you call them, those people from Finland, missionaries, the missionaries, yeah. missionaries. <coughs> their first target was traditional leadership. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like in the north, we know very well that they were welcomed by Shikongo Shakarur, mm. the then king of Ondonga. And, uh, um, the rest is history. It started with traditional leaders. And you see, traditional leadership has always and shall continue until further notice to be the only vehicle through which any change uh, um, can be enforced. Without traditional leaders, you can only try. Mm -hmm. um, and the second wave uh, uh, which followed was uh, trade unions. Again, they penetrated uh, traditional leadership, and that's where they sourced mm. their uh, core members. And uh, student movement, again, is the same principle. Like in the North, people are um, under wrong il illusion to think that uh, uh, an organization like NANSO was started in the North mm. by students. NANSO was, was actually introduced in the North by the church and the trade union. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes, um, the, the um, South African Territory Forces 
uh, or the colonial regime for that matter, that's the same method they used. Yeah. They just follow what uh, the um, missionaries have done. The system has worked, it has produced even for them. Mm -hmm. So there was no need for them to change it in any way. But, 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 the, but, but the difficulty is that um, those years and also in your area there, <clears throat> not only, of course, Ondangwa was really a huge uh, catchment area. Yes. Um, and a lot of people from the Ondonga area, if I must be frank, were really in a, co opted into this system, mm -hmm. uh, serving as some sort of puppets or, or whatever. Some of them got assassinated by Swapo uh, um, um, military people. Uh, that's why I find it difficult how some of you managed to navigate in that space because everybody was sort of just a lot of people were leaning towards the, the these foreign forces. Let me let me say this to you. You say the opposite is also true. Yeah. When I made the earlier statement, yes. I can also twist it and say <laughs> the opposite was also true. <laughs> yeah. Look at. Um, bright soldiers, yeah. plan has produced the majority of them, those who have made it into uh, uh, commanding uh, position. Yeah. And uh, the brighter one among them is Shali. Yeah, yeah. Shali is just from uh, Oludo, yeah, yeah. Ndangwa area. So yes, the system was there, but traditional leaders and uh, I can tell you, I was fortunate um, also to grow up in front of uh, my mentor, basically. Uh, in the end, uh, the late uh, Umkwanilwa, the king of Ondonga, yes. uh, Tate uh, Kauluma. Yes. Um, this man mentored many people, including Shari. Shali went through his hands. Mm. So I'm fortunate also to have gone through uh, that um, uh, uh, hand of blessing yeah. of uh, the late Umkwanilwa. Um, your question is not easy to answer because a person like late Umkwanilwa, it's only him who knew how to navigate through that maze. Yeah. yeah. His uh, brother, um, um, uh, uh, whom he took over from, mm. uh, yes, he was part of uh, the then uh, Ovambo administration. And uh, for some reason, he was smart enough to maneuver his way out mm. of the system. But you see, when I say all of us are products of our time, what I mean is the challenges you have faced as a generation, they are very much unique. Mm. And it's only you who can tell that story more than the next person. And sometimes um, you can't write that book yeah. uh, and uh, complete it. It evolves. Um, so it was a very challenging uh, period. Uh, but I can assure you, it was also very exciting. Like, for example, in my case, from our house, my, the brother, my brother I come after, was uh, in uh, the army, 101 Battalion. Yeah. One of my brother went into exile, and most of my cousins went into exile. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to survive um, that period because, um, because I have always been, uh, um, uh, what is it, what is the right word to use? I've always been uh, inquisitive mm. about uh, anything about life. That's why I was able not to be captured. Yeah. For example, to go into the religious movement uh, because most of my family members are also into that. Yeah. Um, but there was one old man called uh, uh, late Gabriel Shikongo. Late Gabriel Shikongo, uh, for what it's worth, he is one person 
individually who introduced Nanso in the north. Uh -huh. I can tell you that. Yeah. And uh, the sad thing about Gabriel Shikongo is that he died a pauper. Yeah. And he's probably one person who made me think twice about getting involved deep into politics. Yeah. Because what I saw, his uh, last days, uh, uh, he was not in a good state. Not at all. Yeah. And Gabriel Shikongo, by the way, is the father of uh, of um, of uh, Shikongeni, Papa Shikongeni. I see. Yeah. Okay. No, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. His his grave is just there in Katutura Cemetery. I'm not sure if uh, they have put a proper. Mm -hmm. uh, memorial stone, but uh, some of us every day we wake up with that guilt mm -hmm. to say, had it not been for this man, I would not have um, uh, 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 been captured mm -hmm. to join the student movement and eventually uh, join Swapo Party and uh, make it even to the Central Committee yes. of Swapo Party. Yes. It started with him. Absolutely. I give all credit to him. Absolutely. John, while we are on the issue of uh, traditional <coughs> leaders, leadership, traditional authorities, and you are a, a senior councillor, traditional leader in your, in your district, um, one of the closest aides of the current uh, king of Ondonga, there's always been this debate around the boundaries where does the state powers start and where, do, where does it end insofar as traditional authority jurisdictions and decisions and powers? I spoke to King uh, uh, Nangolo in 2022. I think you have you helped me uh, facilitate that interview and I, I, I thank you for that. And, and I put this same question to him at the time at Tongwediva Trade Fair, and I said to him, you know, but who owns the land, for example? Mm. And he was adamant that uh, he is, as the representative of the people, the, the owner of that land. Is that your, your view? Where, where does the state power end in, in, in situations like that? Okay. Very good question. But let's trace the origin of that question. Yeah. The origin of that question uh, became relevant only after 21st March 1990. Yeah. Before that, there was no question about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what happened since? Why 21st March 1990? Is because of the constitution that we have adopted. Yeah. Look, everything else that is set out in our beautiful constitution about traditional authority. It's actually not of our making as a society, as Namibia. There is no mention of a king or a queen yeah. in that constitution. Yeah? Do you know why? Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's simply because we have adopted the doctrine of the Commonwealth. Meaning, at the end of the day, that there is only one king and one queen. Mm. And is the queen of England. That's basically where, or to me, is the cause of all evil. Yeah. Now, somebody would ask a question. Why are we not democratizing traditional uh, authorities? Yes. You see, that question is actually not coming from um, a good place. It's coming from a place where whoever is asking that question, it's either he or she looked down on you, or he's asking a rhetoric question because he believes in the Commonwealth system. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, uh, Toivo, if you are talking about democracy and you want to bring in traditional element and introduce it to traditional authority how about the queen 
the kingdom, United Kingdom. Mm. What is democratic about it? Mm. As far as their kingdom is concerned, what is democratic about it? Yeah. We have seen the change of God. Eh? A lot of things were happening there. And it's establishment that is set up centuries ago. But they want you to change what makes you a person, yeah. what makes you tick as a person, to change it so that you can become what? So that you can become like them. Mm. But when you have become like them, you can only learn until you die. You will never perfect that system. Yeah. So the question of land, if we are not going to sit and have another land conference and face each other and tell us and um, tell each other the truth, we are not going to resolve it because the land must belong to the people of that area. Mm. And the government can only assist in so far as management of that land. Because of what? Because it has the administrative muscle to do that. But to say you will manage the land from Windhoek, mm. the land under traditional authorities, you can never succeed. And it's a debate that you can never win. Therefore, nothing can happen. It's still, mm. so the king is right yeah. to say the land under his jurisdiction is his. Mm. <clears throat> do, do you believe in, uh, <clears throat> before you go for a break, uh, John, do, do you believe in, uh, what are your thoughts on ancestral land? Because I suppose the context differs now from where you and I come from in the north might be. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are people who say, for example, we live, we are doing this conversation from commerce. And there are people in commerce who believe that uh, uh, the Damaras, the Komanen, for example, they want government to pay serious and sensitive attention towards the issue of uh, ancestral land. What are your views? I 100% in agreement with them. It's theirs. They must get it back. Yeah. Yeah, they must get it back. The practicalities are not uh, going to make it uh, easy. But why? Why is, it, why is it a question that where do you start? You start, you see, the, the, the beauty of life, ne? how you started something, that's how you end it. Mm. And how you ended it, that's how you should start. You just have to go backward. Just do the right thing. What happened for these people to lose their land? No, they were deposed. This and that happened to them. It's their claim. They must get it. Mm. They must get it. Mm. Why should it belong to uh, any other um, uh, 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 movement or you call it now municipalities. Yeah. If it's a municipal thing, the municipality must be able to take care of that community because it's not their land. Mm. Aye, it's not their land. I hear you. We go for a quick break and then I return with uh, John Walenga. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neopaints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neopaints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. conversation on the agenda with uh, John Walenga. Now, John, let's talk about, let's shift the gear a little bit. Let's talk about your success. Because I'm asking this because you are forever scrutinized in the papers and uh, 
your businesses, uh, when they win tenders, or they do this, or they do that. How much has politics, your ascendance to the, to the Central Committee of SWAPO, uh, having really reached this good space within the political movement, how much of that plays a role in, has played a role in your success as, as a businessman? First, um, the scrutiny you refer to is something I enjoy. <laughs> it's something you enjoy. Yeah. If I wake up one day and I don't hear people talking about me, I get worried. Yeah. What is it? I start huh, pinching myself because it means I'm losing something. Uh, because it's something that I have acquired. Yeah. It's not something of my making. However, I don't dance to it. Yeah. I do what I do and what I believe in. And thank you for recognizing me as a successful business person. But I can guarantee you I'm not a businessman. What are you? I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference? The difference is that an entrepreneur will come up with ideas. Yeah. It's an idea-based uh, concept. Yeah. You come up with those business ideas, you start them, implement them, and hand over to mm -hmm. business people to manage. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Okay. Don't give me something to manage, but give me an idea you are stuck with. I will be able to refine it for you. And that's what I do. That's why you will not find me in the space where I will be selling sweets yeah. or cement. No, it's too boring for me. It's too boring for me. Yeah. So there, there is, um, having said that, I don't see how politics can play a role in a, entrepreneurial spirit, because it's a spirit within you. But, but you know, John, that um, if you speak to people like Nahas Angola mm -hmm. today, people like saying, yeah, he's a bitter old man, you know, just because he got defeated at Congress, now he scrutinizes Swap in this way. But he makes some really poignant observations. Mm -hmm. For example, to say, the, the ruling party has become a vehicle for if you want to stand a good chance to win a, a tender, for example, or a co state contract, you have to be almost uh, cozying up to Swapo. A, a, a random Namibian with no political currency doesn't stand a good chance to win a contract like that, as opposed to Walenga, who is a, a cadre of the movement, served the party in, the, in various capacities. Um, so, so, so that is really where, where, where this thought comes from. I don't mean to differ with uh, my uncle. Yeah. Um, but let me put it this way, because the question is directed to me. How many Walengas do you know? I only know the black Chinese. One, See? one only. One only. Yeah. It means everything about the Walengas started with me. And hopefully it's not going to end with me. Now, if you are saying there is a political currency behind John Walenga, what do you want that political currency to be used? Only in politics and not in the business space? Now, oh, yeah. you have leaders, yeah? and they don't want you and I to talk about it. Yeah. Who has gotten in the top position to become a, a minister without mon monopolizing the political space? Who? Tell me of one. You must monopolize certain structures yeah. in order for you to get there. Yes, I'm aware of those who get helicoptered and wheelbarrowed in position. But that is the starting journey of their political career. 
Mm. Those ones, they still have a long way to go. So, to me, there is nothing wrong uh, to use, if, if that's what it amounts to, what you would have learned in the political space and employ it in the business uh, space. Yeah. And I can tell you this, tell me of any black or white, Indian, whatever color, Chinese, yeah. person who has made it into the business space without exploiting the business, I mean the political space. Tell me of one. Yeah, it's a, it's a fair question, John. And I'm not uh, naive to the general framework of what you're saying, to say, look, politics present, the political environment present opportunities and it's, all, it's up to all of us mm -hmm. to capture that and, and, and run with it. But when it becomes a partisan state of affairs where I must be a card carry member of a particular party in order to stand a better chance, that's almost like a political party using state resources to buy votes. You know what? To me, that's a perception. Because nobody can prove it. Yeah. Up to now, as we speak. And I'm a living proof of that. I have never applied for a tender and win it. As John Walenga. Never. Anything that you know of that has become a controversy it was a proposal that I have given yeah. to government because I saw an opportunity and I was granted the opportunity. Yeah. Now, look at it this way. Somebody would say, no, John only got it because. Yeah. But you don't know what John has done in the background. Some of these things, uh, that, for example, that uh, contract, it yeah. has been long coming. It has been in the public discussion, maybe it's for a, almost the, 10 years. The diamond one now? Yes. So that's where I want to quickly inter intervene. So one of the questions around your company, C60, uh, when it won that contract with uh, Namdia, the, the, the impression is not very much that uh, what you did is wrong. The question is, first and foremost, how did John, how did C60 get to know, because the, the proposal must be based on some information that you got and say, oh, this, that, this thing. And, and for you to put together a proposal so perfect that it meets the, the expectation of that party, you must have had ample information. How did you get the information? Okay. I said earlier, the discussion around the formation yeah. of um, a vehicle to take advantage of the 15% has been in the mill for almost 10 years. I picked it up because it was public discussions, it was everywhere, and I took the opportunity and said, let me focus. Let me not just participate in the discussion, but get all the necessary information, yeah. and when it's time for it to be executed, I will go for it. Yeah. And that's basically what happened. It's not something that happened overnight. But you see, I understand also where some people are coming from. Because as a black person, you are not supposed to know some of these things. <laughs> Blacks, unfortunately, yeah? and it's our own people, we don't realize the message we are sending to the next generation, that for you to be successful, only if you would have done something wrong, yeah. corruption and all that. But let me put this to you, um, Trevor. The real reason how that thing started, and by the way, I like your headline. <laughs> that one, you know it, that one. Eh? I was dribbled, what is it? Yeah, Walenga yeah, dribbled. dribbled. I love it. <laughs> to me, that was 
one of the best headlines I have ever seen. Yeah. Now, I took that uh, headline of yours and I put it on my status. <laughs> Even though you can go there on my social media and people are like, is John crazy? These people are talking about him, but yet say yes, yeah. I recognize creativity. Now, the unfortunate message we don't realize we are sending to our next generation is, yeah. in order for you to become somebody, it's only if you're in politics, in religion, um, and all other social uh, uh, sectors, yeah. and not business. Mm. Now, who is moving what in the world? It's business people. Mm. Can politics exist without business people? It can't. Because we saw yesterday, or the day before yesterday, parliament release money to millions to political parties. Where did that money come from? It's via tax. It's via, uh, what is it? Uh, VAT. All sorts of tax, and this is where now you give credit to an organization like NAMRA. Now, if as a government you only collect tax from other people and not your own, is that sustainable? If anything that what we should be focusing on, and not that I believe in a black and white thing, it's just very unfortunate that yeah. as black people, there are only two things we have managed to do together successfully. That is religion and politics. Mm. Is that sustainable to us? It's a, it's, a, it's a good question. But in summary, John, would you have been as successful as you are today if it wasn't for your political connections? I would say yes. In fact, the politics um, is a spanner in the work, in my case. Because I can survive without politics, here I am. People don't realize that it's almost 20 years that I've not practiced politics. 20, solid Yeah, years. but you, 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 you are a king maker of some sort. You are, a, you are a man who owns very powerful platforms, the media space, for example, very, very powerful. Um, you are still a bona fide SWAPA member. You don't have to be actively in the structures of the party, but everybody sees from a distance that this is our member when they see John Walenga. So it's easy for you to knock on the doors of particularly state entities like Namdia and others and uh, just be recognized in that context. Let me correct you there. I C60 never had a deal with Namdia. Well, you, C60 you had a deal with the Ministry of Mines and Energy. Okay. But creative people like yourself, you use all your energies to try to redirect society into the thinking that the deal was between C60 uh, and uh, Namdia. Those and are technicalities, it, but we know that the business what was taking place between C60 and Namdia. In no, terms of it the wasn't. In terms of the diamond... Uh, no, it uh, wasn't. Okay. It was always with government. This is where some of you yeah. in this space yeah. of uh, information mm. also fail to educate and tell the true story about it. Let, let's assume you are correct. Okay, I mean, you, you, let's say... But do you know what? But so, you know what? So the difference is still the same then. The, the, the question will still be the same. You're still doing... You can remove uh, Namdi out of the picture, it's directly the ministry, it's still the same connection. Let me say this to you. Yeah. And I want you to give me a different picture. Yeah. The name John Walenga, who is a bona fide member of SWAPO, ne? and I'm still a member of SWAPO, yes. ne? is not a key to anything. Yeah because I have never used it for anything. And I can challenge anybody out there yeah. 
to bring out anything that I have gotten because of my relationship with Swabo. Because actually to me, the relationship with Swabo is a problem, <laughs> even in some government uh, ministries. Yeah. Do you know why? Yeah, why? I said to you, and that's my belief, yeah. leadership is generational. Think of any minister of my generation, executive director of my generation, a director, and those are the people who are moving things in government, eh? yeah. who of them of my generation, people I have been in the trenches with, political trenches with today, none can claim today that he has facilitated anything for me. And I put it to you, none. If anything, none will say it either, even if they did. No, who, who it's, was, it's, who? I, I'm, I'm challenging even them. Yeah. Even them. You are daring them. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, the last question on the C60 deal is that <clears throat> the entity, because mm. it was a highly technical job, Very. and uh, C60, which by the way, was first a a cleaning detergents company, which uh, whose mandate there at the register of companies was just changed now to say, look, uh, this is no longer what we do. Mm -hmm. Linked up with a, an Israeli entity, mm -hmm. well connected also that entity, mm -hmm. uh, to come and provide that technical capacity. Mm -hmm. So. The impression mm -hmm. is that John Walenga and uh, Mr. Uh, Kauluma, your partner, mm -hmm. what you brought to the table was simply your connections in politics. Others, what they brought on to the table was that the technical expertise because you did not have this capacity. So, is it another? Would you say that again, this is, yes, this is me being smart, I see opportunities, I use my connections, that is my, my, my contribution to the, to the deal, or do you think that uh, there is something that is not right in that sense? Um, everything was above board. Yeah. Um, again, I'm saying, uh, with due respect, that whoever can conclude that the opposite is true, yeah just undermining other people's intelligence. That deal, and I can say to you um, with all the muscles I have in my body, yes, it's highly technical, but once you master it, it's also the easiest. Remember this, for you to execute that deal, you needed to send people yeah. overseas to study and become expert. And that we did send people and they executed uh, the assignment to perfection. It wasn't me. It was young people that we have sent to India and Israel for training. Mm. And the question you people don't ask is this, or what you, what, what you don't tell, because that's actually where you started. How would the discussion ne, pan out if we had failed for one reason or another? Because we have done our job. And I can tell you the information I'm sitting with, I cannot divulge that information to any other party because the information belongs to government. Yeah. And we have given it to them. We do have the copies because we were just waiting. Because some of you, you were claiming that we were not delivering. And yeah. even some people from Nandi, Namdia were claiming that. But we say, okay, put us to test. Yeah. So to me, Toivo, that was a dream cut short. Because if we had continued yeah. Ne, yeah. with that contract, we would have been, Namibia would have uh, um, um, uh, acquired expertise 
around the diamond industry. But it's a dream card short. Nothing, uh, what is it? Uh, government uh, ended the contract, us paid the contract. Yeah, but if you, if you had uh, done a brilliant job as the, as the picture you are painting, uh, President Hage Gengob, who was a very close uh, uh, friend of yours, um, had issues with that deal. He directed uh, Leon Euster at the time to investigate that matter. Tom Alwendo went all out to make sure that uh, this contract is not renewed. Surely these are not mad men just trying to disturb peace. These are people who must have scrutinized things and say, but something is not right here. Uh, I cannot be responsible for how other people perceived it. Uh, but it's just unfortunate that uh, uh, some of the information you are diverging now, yeah. that uh, the late president was against it. And uh, what is it? Joste investigated. He produced a report. I'm sure you have seen it. Yeah, the president uh, sat uh, on it for a long time. Maybe, no, but maybe, you have maybe, seen it. Maybe you guys have seen the report. Maybe because he saw his friend uh, John's name is there, then he said, ah, no, no, I must he, he, You are saying he had a problem with it. And you are saying we are friends. <clears throat> and yet he went out. That's your words. Uh, uh, for it to be cancelled. Tom Alwendo. I didn't know that he came with a mission to see to it that it's terminated. Mm -hmm. But that's good information. <laughs> no. But the very same Arwendo, <laughs> yeah. the very same Arwendo, who is a very good friend of mine, and believe me, I don't hold grudges. I don't. Yeah. Was able to facilitate our lithium to be shipped out of Namibia at no cost. But that's not an issue to Namibians. It's yeah. not. <laughs> it was a big but, issue. But it was always in the media. No. Yeah. It was not about... Because uh, we uh, the media it, hammered uh, Tom a lot. Yeah. How, how can, w despite a standing cabinet... And, and then what happened? What happened to Tom? Because things must happen <laughs> when people do things wrongly. <laughs> what happened to Tom? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. So, as we sort of uh, draw towards the conclusion of this vibrant conversation, uh, uh, my friend uh, John. So, do you think that might be co connected to what we're just talking about here? Because there's also this impression that we must get our indigenous black businesses into the spaces that, was, that were alien to us mm. in the past. And we came up with initiatives like BEE, now there's this NIEF, NIEF that is being also pursued to address the past injustices. Do you think that uh, 34 years into independence that those policies are still valid and are they being exploited actually unfairly because there are people who are asking questions, how more black must I be to break into that circle? Because it's always the same people that are benefiting from these uh, initiatives. Toivo, let us tell the truth eh, about economic empowerment. There was never a policy on black economic empowerment in Namibia, never. Okay. There is no policy that has passed through Parliament that talk about economic empowerment of pre previously disadvantaged. It's a document that is collecting dust somewhere. So, the, and, and, and to me that is very sad. I will ask, rather ask you a question. If you go in that Parliament, you become a leader of all Namibia. The whole of Namibia is, we regard you as a leader. Now, if for all the years, 34 and counting into independence, we don't have a deliberate policy that calls for the empowerment of the previously disadvantaged, whom do you live for? Mm -hmm. Because we vote for you, 
And nobody can tell me that I vote without expectation. I have expectations. And empowerment is one of the expectations I have. Mm -hmm. And that is not personal. It can, a policy should be able to empower any other Namibian. Now, what is this message that all the political parties for all those years are sending to us as voters? Because if we are not benefiting as blacks, somebody else is. Who is that? And why? Why did you take over government if you cannot come up with deliberate policies to empower your own? Because those are the people who vote for you. But in truth, oh, sorry, John. Uh, in, in truth, the that empowerment is already taking place. Maybe Way. not. Maybe not. Not in a formalized manner like you have wanted in a legislated manner, mm -hmm. which which would have made things maybe more pointed. But um, look around, John. You and I know that uh, the majority of uh, because let's face it tenders for example are an industry on its own it's, it's been booming uh, and it's a necessary industry because work must be done and somebody must do that job and it's black people that are dominating these spaces when you go around in these uh, SOEs mm -hmm. the, the CEOs are all black I can almost tell you that uh, that's why sometimes when I see, I remember the other time, last, was it last year or a year before, Job Ampanda was complaining about um, Paratis having the entire board of Paratis is, is white. And with one black person there, uh, Josephine Shikongo, I think is her name. And I say, and he was going on about how can a white company in a predominantly black country just be whites and whatnot. And I'm saying, but if you, if the white people, if white companies do not appoint fellow whites, I don't know how they are going. Their children are not wanted in this country. They are working in Australia and Germany because when this child meets with Trayvon Jebel at the table, there's a likelihood that I will be taken. Uh, of course, maybe I'm qualified, but the black element also plays a role. So it's not like uh, black economic empowerment is not really taking place despite lack of legislation. It's taking place. Uh, you see, Toivo, um, when you are calling and advocating for a policy, it's not because you want it to be biased towards a color. Ne? In the business fraternity, the color that matter is green. It is green. Yeah. You know most. <laughs> Take a US dollar. It's green. It's money. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah. That is the right color you should be talking about. That's why I'm saying I'm not speaking from a page, space of color. Because that, when you are looking for protectionism, you also don't become a business person. Because you are always protected. Because once that cover is removed, you are gone. So that's not what people like myself are advocating for. We are saying let there be a policy where every Namibian citizen will be able to relate to. Now, some of the things you are talking about are probably taking place because of that gray area. So a company like Paratus, for example, I'm sure Job, that he's a politician, He's probably qualified to make such a statement. But a company like Paratus, it's a company that I can vouch for. I was on that board. I was involved with them. Yeah? And that company was started by three white boys. I called them boys because at the time they started, they were boys. And Paratus was not started here. Paratus was started in Angola. Ne? And it's our Namibian embassy which facilitated for Paratus to kick off in Angola. And the rest is history now. So we ought to be proud of initiatives like um, uh, Paratus. 
Now, the question is, why would you want the boys who started Paratus to go around looking for duckies in order for them to get on board? Why? So that's just a political statement. But we are saying if we want to make a difference in this economy, we must move away from that and talk about business people. Look at this thing of um, infant industry protection. You can't grow an industry through protection. Today, if you remove that infant industry protection, for, for example, in the uh, uh, pottery industry, that company will collapse. Why? Because it has become a spoiled brat. Now we are talking about Africa free trade area. That protectionism cannot stand in today's world. So let us move away from that. And you are talking about whites. There is one thing that we need to learn, especially from Africaners. Africaners, there is a lot that we can learn from them. Is the only tribe that I know here in Africa, on the continent, every little cent they make, they reinvest it in Africa as much as we want to hate them. So those are good lessons that we must take from them. We don't have to go too far away. They are just here. Those are lessons that we must learn from our fellow Namibians. The color thing, it's not going to take us anywhere. Right here. John, there's so much that I wanted us to talk about today, but you've done justice uh, to, to what we were able to cover. But uh, yeah, thank you for making time. Let's talk again uh, soon, because uh, uh, there are many other topics that I want us to engage on. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I yeah. equally appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is a beautiful setup. I like it. Wonderful. We need more of uh, NMA, yeah? Yes. We need more of them. Thank you. Thank you. And John. my dream is to grow my little company into the NMA. <laughs> into this area. Thank you. John. Thank you very much. That is uh, John Walenga. Uh, uh, just, uh, of course, on the platform tonight to share with us uh, his views. I thought uh, he was very brilliant on uh, what he's convincing in his arguments, whatever side of the fence you may be on. Thank you for watching.